Hey all. So today we're discussing what I believe is the best underpainting technique for flesh that I've come across. So sit back, relax and enjoy. Roll intro. <laughs> Yeah, what we're going to discuss today is underpainting, but in a slightly different way than you normally see. You normally see what would commonly be called like the xenophil priming, or artistically known as grisaille, that is black and white gradients to help you define shadows. But we're doing something different uh, using the anonymous 2.0 bust, which I'll put a link down below. A very nice bust made by uh, Alfonso Grada's sorry if I pronounce that wrong um, also known as Banshee it's uh, a very flesh bust there's no other no other like textures on it it's just flesh so it'd be really good to show off this technique since Vodaccio is mostly used for flesh you can use it for other stuff um, but the most useful thing is is flesh uh, some it's, it's, when I say other stuff I mean like some oil paintings by the old masters were done entirely in this and then glazed over um, textures whatever clothing everything and then this uh, so I hear you cry what is Vodaccio? well as you can see it's kind of using a greedy bluey grey um, colouring I think originally it was if you know your pigments it was like uh, yellow ochre and Mars black was your and a mix of to build the base tones obviously as we've developed on and gone further um, we can use a lot a lot more variety now um, so yeah we, we're gonna use that that technique so taking the bluey bluey greeny color uh, I I'm technically using the blue here to try and um, create some colder shadows and you'll see soon I'll be using some green as well to create some warmer highlights so I like the I want to see what the variation would look like uh, but but why are we doing this it's, you may ask why is this good for flesh well the the green undertones mix firstly if you know your, your color theory at all the green undertones mix really well with kind of the ready colors in flashy colors they, they can help up it pop and kill some of the the tone you might not want like the deep orangey reds but kill some of those back to bring it back to more fleshy color um so it can make this actually quite quick as opposed to using a uh, standard xenophil highlight so you don't have to build up as many like flesh tone colors because this will help create it with just like a couple of glazes over the top um so yeah, as you can see here, I'm, I'm building up through some different different blues to create my highlights, my initial highlights. I'll put all the colours down below as well with the, the link to Banshee's miniature, uh, the miniature used in this. Uh, everything I'm doing, as you can see, is I'm kind of, apart from on the, the skull, I'm aiming kind of from below. When I get to the greens, I'll be aiming from more of a 45 degree-ish angle. Um, but this is this is an experiment this is playing you'll, you'll see that i mostly use the airbrush in this i do get the brush out to do the, like the eyes and and such but this was a as, as artists we, we always want to experiment so i'm trying to get better with the airbrush so the best way to do that is actually use it i want to try new techniques so the best way to do that is try it like we are here we're trying a different different type of underpainting you notice I didn't go for a grisaille at all. I started straight from black and started putting the blues and greens straight on top of it. And as you can see here, putting the first greens in, going into my highlights. You'll notice that a spot keeps drop, flaking off the back of his head. I, I thought that was uh, me like not having cleaned the, the resin well enough or something and it was peeling off. It took me a while to realise that I'm an absolute idiot and I kept dropping him on his head. Uh, scraping the paint off on the, the little table <laughs> that I use uh, but but as an artist we take what we see we take our mistakes we learn from them and we use them you'll see I do something what I thought looked quite nice 
from using this constant flaking in the end. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, a, a lot of the old Italian masters were used this a lot. Um, th there was two ways that I've come across in my studies. I, I didn't study art. This is a lot of reading up on the technique when I heard about it. Um, so you've seen the way I've done it. I've done, literally quickly laid down some base tones and now I've started to put the initial flesh layers on. And you can all see already how how good that flesh looks straight away. Like as we turn the model rain, as it starts to dry, you see there's also already a lot of uh, tonal variation in it, giving you shadows, highlights already done with just one quick coat. Uh, it didn't take much more. So saying that, and that that's the one quick way, blitz your, your base coats, get some basic highlights down, the other way I know some of the old and current artists even doing especially oils and stuff they'll paint the the picture to perfection in Vodaccio and then their last step will be just a couple of very light glazes of the flesh and it'll just bring the color to the, what the color they want um, as opposed to doing this where you'll see I do a lot more work with the flesh using some more normal painting techniques so here I'm starting to put more ready colours over me, over me blues to help build some of those purpley tones underneath and such. Um, but yeah, they'll they'll basically have pre prepped all of that in their greeny blue colours that they use. Um, so you can do it either way. It'd be interesting to try and see how far we could push the under colours in another model at some point. But um, so yeah, so I'll explain what I've done so far. Uh, so I used the different variations of range of scale colours, they're, they're on my favourites. Uh, let's see if I can figure out which ones they are. So I started with an uh, anthracite grey, which is a bluey grey, to build my deepest shadows. And then building out of those shadows went to Caspian blue. And then a final bearing blue over the top of that. And then from a higher angle, that's where we applied our greens, which are Adrian's green and field grey, which is a greedy grey. And then we started applying our various uh, mixtures of flesh over the top, which are mostly again scale colours. And as you can see, we're just what we're playing with is we're we're doing different mixtures of the flesh over the top using utilizing the the way we colored it for going from that warm to cold to warm we're trying to do something similar and as it's a bust um i was playing with it and i also aim to try and give a different side variation so the one side slightly heavier with the red the one slight slightly heavier with the uh, more purpley color that you saw i mixed the the uh anthracite grey with the flesh colour to, to make a shadow colour and here we are okay doing eyes since we're since that's what's on screen at the moment I'm, I'm recording this over a three times speed the actual video is almost like an hour long and I sped it up because no one wants to watch it for an hour especially most of it's just airbrushing um, so the eyes I started with a a off-white it's a kind of like an ivory white I get my one of my base, like my shadow reds, and wash that into like around the edges of the eyes to build out that ready colour, make it slightly more fleshy looking. Um, I didn't go over the top with it; it, it was quite watered down. Then, then what I do is draw line, like vertical lines to try and position where I want the pupils to be. Remembering that doing eyes, you never really see the whole, all the color in the eye, the whole circle. So it's usually blocked off at some point or both points if I one of the eyelids or both. You see, I've, then, I, then I start to build it out a bit, start pushing it into a more of a circly shape and try and introduce a bit of color. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. We have so I, I tried to go for blue, kind of. It, 
it's uh, quite difficult to see from the lighting I've used. I started to, to push it around a bit. Didn't like how it was good. So this was obviously all, all an experiment. So play, play with it. As you can see I'm doing, I'm just constantly adjusting, pushing it. If I don't like it, I can bring the white back in and neutral it out again. And I, I, I carry on painting the flesh soon. And at which point I do then come back to the eyes because I was like, I'm not quite 100% with how they were. Yeah, you can see I'm just trying to build that, that, that circle -y look, make them look as natural as possible. Try not for, try not for the, the shocked thousand yard stare that uh, can quite happen. And eventually I'll bring the fleshy darky dark red back in to, to re-highlight underneath and around just to make sure it's it all it's all correct but yeah if you look while we're doing it if you look at the chest you can see the differences in the tones underneath his chin you kind of got that slightly more red kind of got in the, the crevices you've got um, some of the purples and reds showing through and a lot of this is helped by having the bluey greens underneath they, they help define how the flesh looked so here I'm just building a generic lip colour because obviously our lips humans are, are, are more ready than our face so I wanted it to look like he wasn't the most well person at which point it's uh, closer to your natural skin tone whiting out kind of thing as it desaturates when you're ill and there we go trying to add in some very thin lines to help build up the highlight and give a bit of texture to the lips Yeah, yeah, I'm hoping you, you've seen how, like I said, this this whole video, if I didn't speed it up, was, was only an hour. That's how long it took me to, to paint this whole model. I mean, there's always, you can always spend more time. But as, as a learning technique, I took an awesome bust, took it to a point that I was happy with how it looked. Here we go, back, back to the eyes, like I said. And I learned what I needed from it. And that's what you want from any models especially things like busts they're really good good models for just just learning um, trying new things pushing yourself in new ways they're even great for, for like taking a paint range that you've never used before and just throwing it that one paint range at it so if you don't paint with oils grab a bust chuck some oils at it see how you do so here we are now I'm taking the brush and doing some Picking out some of the highlights, picking out some of the shadows. So I'm pushing more of the blue shadows onto the to the uh, left hand side. So I wanted that to be a bit, obviously, a bit uh, colder, which is what the blues tend towards. So I wanted to. So we we've done already the going from the bottom to the top. The Vodaccio gave us some some cold to warm and now I want to bring some of this going left to right so and here the spot on the back of the head here we go this this is what I thought I went actually if I put in my uh, shadow tone blend it out a bit we've got a nice uh, spot of maybe like a birthmark or a bruise I kind of try to figure out what I wanted as I did it. I was like, nah, that's maybe a bruise. He's not well. Something's happened. So I put a bit of uh, the ready colour around it just to, to push the idea that it's, a, it's it's been hit and it's still healing. <laughs> and then I then I desaturated some of the flesh with some whites to make it a bit more grey. It's a very subtle effect around his mouth because he's a man. So no matter what we try and do, we shave every day, shave it back as far as possible. It will still be the hint of, it'll be slightly desaturated for the rest of our face because of our beard growth. And I was just trying to introduce a bit of that, that in. My, my technique was very thin lines, quickly motioned to, to try and indicate hair in a sense. 
if you're looking at my palette as well, you know, it's the, the strange white splotch. That's uh, actually Chimera Colors uh, Satin Medium, which I quite like for thinning. Here, it's kind of difficult to see in this, but if you look in the pictures later, um, I actually desaturated some of the skin because I noticed where it hit a green at another point near the back of the head. It created almost this dead flesh. Since this was the side where I wanted the tone to be colder, I was like, hmm, let's, let's do that. Let's highlight some of those, those patches out and make it deader. And here you can see it's a lot warmer on this side. But you've still got the angle coming in from the bottom, which is slightly colder. Yeah, so we pushed it, pushed some of the warmth in a bit more. I, I, I see how simple it was to, to produce these effects. And I do honestly believe a lot of it was from the Vidaccio, the, the, the underpainting. It made it so simple. And obviously at this point, I could carry on. I could just keep keep adding highlights, just pushing the colors around. And if this was going to go on into a competition, you could easily still spend another 40 hours pushing this. Um, but I, I, like I said, as an exercise for learning for myself, and hopefully you've all learned something from watching this, um, you can hit a point that you can be like, right, that's it, that's done. You don't need to take every model to the perfect highest level. Take a model to something you're happy. I'm happy to display this on my shelf. And uh, yeah, take your learnings and go on to the next thing. Here we are, just finishing up now. Like I said, um, I hope you, you understand why I do actually think this is a very good technique for uh, flesh, for underpainting. I recommend thoroughly looking into it. And I hope I've provided some sort of insight, some sort of new ideas for you, something new for you to try. And if that's the case, please hit the like button, hit subscribe, comment what you think. Do you like the model? Do you like, do you like the way it's painted? I'll, I'll put some pictures, actual final finish pictures up as well. So it'll make it a bit easier to see them instead of it in motion. And uh, yeah, we'll hopefully be doing some more along the busts as well as their board game miniatures and eventually some Warhammer miniatures as well, no doubt. So thank you and hit subscribe.